Akirete Onaudawan, yeah. otherwise known as the Incredible Oak, yes. Oak Smash. Yes. What do you prefer to be called? Um, whatever you can pronounce properly. That's what I prefer to be called. Well, I think Oak is probably the simplest. Oak but is the simplest. It's pretty dope. I also dope. think that we can challenge people to say your yeah, full name. Yeah, if you and can say my full name properly, then like go for it and get your best life. If you can't, there's a wonderful word that you already know called Oak. Is it true that as a kid they called you Oak Tree? Yeah, as a kid they did call me uh, Oak Tree when I was in like middle school and high school. And then they shortened that even further. They're like, Oak Tree is way too hard. What about Oak? <laughs> I'm like, you know, gotta get your life. Uh, what age was that? Elementary school? Uh, no, it was actually middle school. And middle school is when you started doing theater, or were you still uh, playing football at that like, point? No, I did. I did theater in middle school, and, and um, I started playing football in high school. Okay. And then I got injured, and that's how I, I got into the world of the musical theater and acting and all that stuff. What is it about um, the theater that you connect with most that you like the most? Um, the best thing. Well, well, when I got into it, the greatest thing was. Um, just an acceptance in, in the theater community. I got in trouble a lot in school, um, but that was the one place where no one really cared as long as I showed up and did whatever it is they needed me to do. Um, I was kind of welcomed, and it's that atmosphere that is even very present in the theater community today. Like, it doesn't matter where you come from. If you can do what we, I need you to do on stage, you'll be welcomed, and uh, that's really beautiful about the theater community. Yeah. Uh, you just recently went back to your high school in New Jersey and got to speak to some students yeah. there. Yeah, I did. Um, and I watched some reaction videos of the kids who said that one of the most inspiring things was that you were really open about the fact that you didn't do that well in school and you didn't like it. Yeah, I was terrible in high school. I was like really bad in high school. I don't know how I graduated high school, if I'm being real. Um, but yeah, uh, I got in trouble a lot and, and um, being focused in academia was very difficult for me. Um, and I just thought it was important when you, you go back and talk to students, there are a lot of students who feel as if um, there isn't a place for them as if there's something wrong with them, but let them know that you just have to find your path and it's okay if you're not crazy about doing homework. It's okay if you're struggling too. It's okay if you're not doing as well as you, as you think you should, um, as long as you just have a work ethic and a passion in something. I always had a passion in, in this or in playing football. Um, so if you just tap into that, you're not like a lost cause. I know a lot of kids sometimes feel as if they are if they don't have like straight A's and stuff, but they still have a work ethic. So it's like hang on to that work ethic and um, just find out where to apply it, what interests you. Um, but so yeah, I think it's important for, for, for students to know that not everyone is a model student who is a success in life. Yeah. And now you are on Broadway in the biggest show in the world, yeah. in Hamilton, playing Hercules Mulligan and James Madison. Yeah. And I would like to specifically talk about how you play in the first act the biggest character in the show, the strongest character in the show, and then in the second act you play the smallest, most sickly guy in the show. And you seem to embody two different uh, human forms going from one character to the next. I'd argue that you have the most range of anyone on that stage. What's the process of going from the big, strong Hercules Mulligan to the small, sickly James Madison? Um, a lot of the process happened uh, during the rehearsal process when we were creating it. And I know for me, um, whenever I, I work on anything, I, I read it and I first read it as if it's a novel mm -hmm. or as if I'm not doing it. You know how you read a book? You read a book and then you have like, I always think distinctly of like Harry Potter. When everyone first read it before the movies, you had your idea of what everyone looked like and sound like, then the movies came out and that became. So when, you, when I approach something, I do that. So I, in my head, I, I create these people and this is what they look like without me being um, uh, a part of it. So then when I start to work on it, I just try to then be that, be that person I created. So uh, in terms of Hercules Mulligan, I saw this very big, loud, verbocious, fun-loving, prankster kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And then when I read James Madison, because it's separate, I saw this quiet in the back, slightly always annoyed person. So then I would just kind of, in my mind, I will be that. So that's, that helps me in terms of my physicality, because I don't see my physicality when I, um, I read the characters, when I create the characters. I don't think of literally my, myself. I your, just think of them. Your posture is so different, so significant. Like, I feel like in a still photo, I could tell which character you were, even if you had no costumes on. Yeah. And that's a real, a real compliment to you and 
uh, the way that you present yourself on stage purely in a physical way. But of course, your voice is such a big part of these characters as well. Yeah. And everyone I know can, will knows the moment and will say, Hercules Mulligan, yeah. you know? Um, I can only imagine that that gets yelled at you on the street on a daily, if not hourly basis. Um, not an hourly basis. Uh, depending on where I am, the closer I am to the theater, the, the, more, the more it happens. Um, but it, it's really cool. I have a secret fantasy to have that be like audience participation. I want every day, every night, I want the audience to scream out Hercules Mulligan during Yorktown, and then that's it. Like, no one talks about it. It's just like a thing that happens. We all <laughs> scream it, and then, like, the show continues. Um, but, yeah, it's fun, because it's just all love. It's really great to get, get love, love from everyone, and, and it's all coming from a place of people being really affected and moved by the piece, and, and no matter how annoying or tired... I may be, at the end of the day, I can't get that annoyed with someone wanting to like, you know, show love. It's always good. I'm glad to hear that. You, you, I've gotten to know you a little bit over the last year or so, and you're a pretty soft-spoken guy, um, and which seems sort of at odds with this big, bold, jumping over the table, growling kind of uh, character. Um, and I wondered whether the fame was hard on you at all. Um, no, not really. I mean, one thing that helps is... Uh, I'm very different, so from how I am on stage, mm -hmm. so that's kind of helped it. Like Diggs has got like this crazy ass hair, so no matter where he is, you're like, no, that guy, that's to be <laughs> Diggs. So you know, it's it's harder, but in in with what I do and in, in my characters, they're um, they're just very different from how I carry myself. So it's easier for me to just kind of like disappear. Um, so it hasn't been that bad. It's been pretty good. I want to switch gears and talk about your poetry a little bit. Got it. Because that soft-spoken guy feels very much like the soul of a poet. Uh, and I've found some of your spoken word uh, performances online, mm -hmm. and I know that poetry is really important to you. Uh, can you talk about the difference between poetry and performing somebody else's words and sort of where poetry is in your life right now? Um, yeah, I've always been, a, I've always written, I've always been a poet, I've always written, and it's kind of, when I started acting, been on the back burner, and it's always been something that's been very close to the chest. Mm -hmm. It's always been something that uh, I've done for myself. And just recently, I've been performing more, um, I've been just doing my work in, in writing more. Uh, I got on the Fer Forbes 30 Under 30 list, and there was a summit in Israel, and I did a piece, and they had a summit in Boston, and then I did a piece. And, um, just different things here and there, different events. I try to like share my poetry more and it's been received well. Uh, and the great thing about it is, for me, it's, it's exactly how I want to express myself the way I want to express myself. Mm -hmm. Anybody who writes, who, you, you understand. Um, it's great to sing a song that you love, but it's amazing to sing like your words and, and your melodies and, and I have full control over that. Um, so yeah, my plan is to try and just focus on that more and, and find a platform to really share it with people because like with, with this show, um, with some of my pieces, some people are really moved. There's a piece about my mother that, that I wrote and I shared it with some people and a woman came up to me and she was like, that, that resonated so much and there are a lot of things I wish I could say to my mother that I didn't know, didn't know how to, but something about the way you phrased it has helped me. And like moments like that, that, that makes me want to share, share more. Do you think you'll be releasing any of that as an album uh, or? Um, I, I think so. I'm, I'm working with a, a guy named Will Wells right now and he's been bugging me. He's like, oh, send me your stuff, send me your stuff. Because he, uh, he's a producer and he likes to put music on top of poems and words and try to figure out different ways to share poetry in different forms. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I would also like to do, but find out the best way to, to get out there that represents the sentiment, the energy, the feel, the emotion of it. Um, that's kind of the plan for these next. Well, I also know that you're an incredible piano player, which I think that not that many people know. Um, okay. Do you write music at all? Have you um, thought about doing the singer-songwriter thing? Uh, I also I heard you have a huge crush on Sarah Bareilles. I do. So maybe you could collaborate with her if you um, want to write the I music. I do. Yourself. No, she's she's great. I've got I've gotten to know her through through the show, and, and she's awesome. Um, if you guys haven't checked out the piece she did with Leslie Odom Jr., you guys should check that out. Yeah, it was on crazy. on NPR recently. It's so good. Amaze balls. Um, but um, yeah, not I would, but I don't I don't have the discipline as a, as a singer songwriter. I like it, and I'm not at the place where I am with my poetry yet. I have to sit with it more and write more. When I was younger, I used to do it all the time, but um. It just requires so much energy, and I just, I, I'm also hypercritical of everything. Mm -hmm. So if I write something, I'm like, oh man, that really sucks. And then everything sucks. Like nothing is good as far as songwriting goes for me. So I gotta get some more confidence in songwriting and just put it out there the same way and just let people tell me it's great or it's not great. 
All right. Yeah. So when you're not on stage in Hamilton, mm -hmm. uh, what are you doing with your time? Are you just resting? Are you... I, obviously, I, I assume that you're going to the gym. You've got, like, you can't see it under the shirt, this shirt, but he's got these big biceps. Which, by the way, I'd just like to take a moment to, to tell the entire world, there's a nude photo shoot of Oak and his Rocky castmate. Wow, that just if put you, it out there. If you Google, uh, it was from, yeah, from Out Magazine. Thanks, and, Laura. Um, I, I'm going to tweet it immediately following this interview. Well, that's um, a thing. You're... Uh, <laughs> I'm a fan, let's just put it that way. <laughs> Clearly you're going to the gym, was my point. Um, <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, we can take five if you guys want to look at it now. Let's <laughs> just get it over with, just do it. Um, uh, I do a lot of sleeping. Okay. Uh, a lot of sleeping uh, when I'm, I'm not there. I don't go to the gym that often. I hate saying it. People would be like, what? You don't go to the gym? I, I worked out a lot before for Rocky. And, then, mm -hmm. and the show is, is, is pretty physical and it kind of maintains where I am. So if I was like 300 pounds and kind of chubby, that's where I would be throughout the show. It just kind of keeps me wherever I was. Um, no, but a lot of it is sleeping. Then like preparing, you know, I'm, I'm still auditioning a lot. I'm, I'm still reading a, a lot of scripts for different things. So most of my time is, is resting and then doing that, um, as well as writing. Uh, and uh, recently, um, I've, I've taken several trips to Israel and, I'm, and there's a documentary in my head that I, I want to produce and, and write and get off the ground. So a lot of my time has just been like figuring that uh, out. What's well. that about? Uh, so more or less, uh, it's this. It's just this is the beginnings of it too. Like I'm, I'm in the process of figuring out how. I've never made a documentary, so I'm talking to people and, and friends who are in that business and figuring out how to go about getting this out there. But uh, more or less, it's just talking about empathy. I think a, a lot of the, the issues we have in the world um, is due to lack lack of empathy, and it takes work to be empathetic, which a lot of people don't realize. I think it does. You have to actively work on being empathetic to people who look different, sound different, have different cultures. So uh, uh, I'm looking to talk about about mainly like the Holocaust and other genocides across time and space. And hopefully if I can juxtapose them next to each other, kind of uh, illuminate the fact that it's all the same thing. You know, loss is loss and, and, and death is death. And, and it doesn't matter the fact that they speak differently, look differently, sound differently, live in a different area. They're still experiencing the same things that are tragic. And uh, the only way that great change can happen if people who are outside of those experiences uh, give weight and reverence to those who have survived it and try to catch um, moments like that before it leads to another genocide, before it leads to um, another mass killing. Um, yeah, we should see those signs beforehand, and we can, because it, it's happened, but sometimes the difference of language, location, and culture makes you think it's different, mm -hmm. um, and it will sort itself out when it won't, unless there's outside help. So that's the general idea of the documentary wow. to try to do that. And, but in general, I, I am, the point is to build empathy and hopefully throughout it make people realize we have to work to be empathetic. We have to work at it, we have to try it. It will be uncomfortable, it will annoy us, but overall putting, that's something worth putting work into. That's incredibly admirable, wow. Yeah. And I trust that you will continue to update us through your social media as to how we can help yeah. as that progresses. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me of the idea that every individual has their, the power to do their little bit. Mm -hmm. And of course, tomorrow is election day. Is. I know that voting and um, the importance of each person's voice has been very important to the whole Hamilton cast and to you in particular. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say in advance of election day tomorrow? Uh, well, I, like just, just on your point, my mother always says, many drops make an ocean. That's something she always says, she always says. And, it's, and I love that, that phrase because it's, it's very much so true. It's very vital and important for you to go. I've never voted before. I've never voted before, before this election because I was very cynical and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm realizing that more and more that it's so important to go out and to make your voice heard and not only for uh, the president, also for senators, your mayor, your governor, all of those things, the people who, who make the laws that govern this country, um, they make it based on your voice. And if you never speak out, if you never make it known how you feel, if you don't write to your congressman, if you don't write to your senators, um, you're the, they do what they do so they can get reelected. So if you say, hey, if 3,000 people write the letter saying, we're not gonna vote for you for reelection. They'll have, they'll have to listen, but we have to take advantage of um, that gift, of that right that we all have. 
Um, so especially to, to young, young people, old people, whomever, if you ever think it's uh, new immigrants, people who just became citizens, everyone has that right if you're a citizen. And it's vital, vital to add your drop to that ocean. You know, it's very, very important. So I think go out, do it. Again, it takes work. Most things take work. It may be annoying, it may be obnoxious, mm -hmm. but in the end, it's worth it, I think. Amen to that. Yeah. I'm going to switch gears a little bit mm -hmm. and ask you about your mismatched socks. Um, I always wear mismatched socks. I love that about you. Why? Uh, I don't know. When I was a kid, my sister, my older sister, I say she, she's a lawyer now and she would hate that I'm telling this story, but she's not here. <laughs> Um, but she would always wear, she wore mismatch socks, and that's honestly where it, where it came from. And actually, when I was a kid in middle school, I would wear mismatch shoes. I would bring, my mother would kill me if she found out, but I'd hide a, one pair of shoes in my book bag, and on the bus, I'd change shoes. But it's kind of always been just a thing uh, that, I, that I do that now it's second nature. I don't even think, if I wear matching socks, it's weird to me, and it feels very uncomfortable. I've, I spent about 10 years of my life wearing mismatched socks, too, so it just makes me feel why a little, you, a little why more you, candid. Why did you stop? Well, tights, it's hard to do mismatched tights. Fair. It would require, fair. require a lot of sewing, which I don't, it's not false. Which I don't do. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about the fact that you recently um, appeared in a reading of the Frozen musical as Kristoff? Yes, that was, yeah, that was great. It was really, um, it was beautiful. It was very, very in, in, inspiring. Uh, and uh, Chris and Bobby, they're great, and it was, it was just nice. It was nice to be involved in the musical, and it was nice to kind of carry, keep going this, um, the idea that Hamilton has presented, just in terms of like stories or stories, and, and we have to change. It's, it doesn't matter what they look like in some cases like the colorblind casting and who we are and who we represent, at the end of the day, you can still tell a great story, even though we don't necessarily look how one would think we should look. And there can be something very poignant in casting in that way. So I was very honored to kind of like keep that torch going with, with the Frozen, when I did work on the Frozen Lab, it was really, really nice. Are you specifically talking in past tense or is, the, is like, do you know what, your future is with you could just say yes or no you know your future with it i'm not trying do. to like no i'm specifically talking anything. past past tense i unfortunately am no longer with frozen um, okay yeah so i'm talking in, in past tense when i worked on the last lab they have another workshop that's happening uh right now that you're not a part of no that I'm well not that's a, a little bit heartbreaking to me yeah. but but i'm really glad that you were a part of it what yeah. uh you're one of the last original uh main characters still with hamilton mm -hmm. um i'm hoping that you'll be around for a while. There are a lot of people still who haven't gotten to see the yeah. show. I know that I've seen a ton of replacements come in over the course of the last year, and, and the show remains the star, but I'm wondering whether you know about your future with um, production. I do know about my future with the production, actually, um, and Christmas Eve will be my last show with Hamilton American Musical. Okay. Well, we've got another month and a half another or month, so month and a half. to go online and get those mm -hmm. crazy expensive tickets. Yeah, Merry uh, Christmas. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and, and a lot of the reason has to do with what I was saying with this documentary that I'm trying to do and, and with writing, um, my, own, my own writing. Um, I feel like it's time just, just, just to move past. And lately I've just been thinking more and more like with this platform that I have, I've acquired more followers and more people who know who I am and pay attention to what I have to say. Um, what am I doing with it? a lot of it? Is like, what am I doing with it? What am I really saying? It is it just like pictures of me like backstage or pictures of me doing whatever the hell it is I'm doing? You know, like what? How can I really exercise this platform I have? And uh, I think it's time to put energy into that for a bit until I book a major motion picture and make a lot of money. <laughs> Is that the plan? Is that what 2017 will bring? Lots of auditions for major motion pictures? It's like all the things. Like 2017 is all the things, but also major motion pictures if anybody from any of the major studios want to cast me in anything. Paramount. Um, yeah, but yeah, more or less. Yeah, it's just kind of focusing on, on, on taking advantage of it. What can I put out in the world in a positive way? What messages can I send and spread to people who normally wouldn't have had them? but um, are receiving them because of me or through me, and then um, making but tons of money. I'm all for that. So Christmas Eve, your last performance in Hamilton, yeah. will that allow you to spend the holidays with your family in New Jersey? 
take yeah. some time off and rest? Yeah, I'm going to take, yeah, I'll take some time off and, and spend some time with my family, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, you know, it's hard. You know, our schedule can be hard, and sometimes uh, we can only make one day of the holiday, and we have to cram everything in that day. So it'd be nice to have several days where I can sit down, relax, rest, talk, be with people, and, and all of those things. So I'm looking forward to that. Are you already in the point with the show where you're like, oh, I'm not going to have this anymore? Are you present in a different way now that you have that end date? Um, I am. I am. It also helps that um, we've been getting a lot of new people coming in and, and old people coming back. And uh, it's just a revolving door um, the show has become. And there's just something really nice about that. Uh, one of our covers went on. Her name is Cindy. And I was watching her throughout the show. She not have been. I should have been like, focusing on what I'm doing. But I was like, I've been <laughs> So I was just kind of watching her and just seeing her energy and her light and just, she was just so present in such a, she was just so happy to be there and it was her first time on for this character and, and that like, inspired me, me so much and kind of um, added some extra fire, fire, fire to me and it was really good to see the show now through people who are doing it for the first time is really fun and really exciting and really, really motivating. So uh, that just kind of keeps me on an incline until Christmas Eve. Well, I can't wait to see what comes next. I'm glad you're still going to be with the show for a few more weeks. Yeah. I really am thrilled about this documentary uh, yeah. idea that you have, and I am excited to see how you push that forward with this work ethic you've been Thank talking you. about. We have time for a few questions from the audience. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Hey, so hey. I was wondering, uh, <clears throat> were there uh, any uh, influences or people that uh, helped you uh, figure out your path um, towards acting when you were younger? Um, yeah, uh, a lot of my, my teachers in high school, when I went back to my high school, I went back specifically to talk to William Farley, Craig Champagne, and Sandra Van Dyke from West Orange High School. Though they really kept me on a path, and they made me really realize um, that this is something worth putting energy into. Like I said, I was all over the place, I got in trouble a lot, but they never ever looked at me sideways, they never cared. They just said, be here, do the work, um, and they gave love. So those, those three, and, and of course, like my family too, my family is always, it takes them some time to get there, but once they got there, they like had my back and they're super supportive. Um, but really those, those three were, were like vital in my development. You have another question? Oh, hey, so I'm one of those people who ha hasn't seen the show yet because you know, they're crazy expensive. So if you know where I can get tickets, <laughs> you can let me know. Um, but I've heard the soundtrack, so I'm just wondering, yeah. What's your favorite song to perform? Uh, I'd say perform. Uh, I can wait for it because I'm singing background vocals. I love wait for it because I uh, I love listening to the song. I love listening when Leslie was like Leslie just murders that song. He's he's a freak. He's remarkable, and um, and still to this day it's like I just love that song so much that I just love to sit in the back, sing the background vocals, and just listen listen to it. How often do you, how many times a day do you get asked for tickets? Um, not that often. Really? I was, yeah. Was, Everyone else I've talked to in the cast is like, they want to get it tattooed across their forehead. I yeah, cannot get I don't really Hamilton. play around. So like when people are like really asking, it was just a so, like a, lots of solids no and you should stop asking. Like a lot of those are like, nah, or I'm like, I think you should stop asking. So the, the general aura of me is not <laughs> ask Oak for a ticket. I don't put that chi out there. It's not really. I will say, though, that I know someone who won the lottery for the show last night. That lottery does work. People do win. It does. That online ticket lottery. Yeah, so. it's, it's remarkable. People do. I once saw, like, I think four people. They're like, yeah, we all won the lottery. I'm like, together? That sounds, something's wrong. So I don't know. I don't think that's real, but it, it works. It be magic for the people who win. Yeah, it works. Yeah, awesome. Uh, hi, it's good to see you. Hey. Um, so the mixtape came out, kind of, two tracks came out. How does it feel knowing Busta Rhymes called out Hercules Mulligan on my shot? Um, great question. It feels great. I mean, I, he loves Hercules Mulligan. <laughs> like, when he came down in the public, we talked to him, and he was just so blown away by it. Um, it was just crazy to, to see and hear. Um, that track is so dope. But to hear everybody on it so excited and moved um, by the show and by the work we did. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really cool and, and, and yeah, it, it's, it's great. Have you heard more than the two tracks that were pre-released for that I've heard a bunch day? of stuff. Did I've you hear the whole thing? Of, not the whole thing, but I heard a bunch of, bunch of tracks. And I won't ask you for too many, for any spoilers, but Got can it. you tell us what your favorite song on the mixtape is? 
Not including the two that have been released? Um, satisfied. Satisfied is Sia. That's my favorite one. I can't wait to hear it's that It's redonkulous. Yay! Yes. Uh, we've got time for one more question. Mm -hmm. um, so you say that you weren't good in school, but yet you're, you have such great vision for your documentary, for sharing your message, and it sounds amazing. I really can't wait, and I hope that that comes to fruition soon. Thank you. But you also, you're a writer, you know, where, so I'm getting my kids, they're being here, educated here in the city, public school, what are you doing, where did your confidence come from to be able to say, you know what, my voice, yes, I'm talented, but my voice and, you know, school sometimes, especially in high school, if you're not doing so great, you're not feeling really good about yourself to be able to say, you know what, I have worth, I can do this. Even in, obviously, in light of theater, that probably helped you quite a bit, but, you know, so what if you weren't very good at math? How did you all of a sudden you know, get, get that. I just think it's really, really inspirational to hear that you weren't very good in high school because I just think that that's amazing to see what track you're on right now. Um, it's a great question. Uh, I mean, there's just, there's just so many things. A lot of it had to do with, uh, um, I'm first generation and my family's Nigerian and Nigerians are pretty damn resilient. So that's like a part of it. Um, the teachers that I mentioned were really great. You know, if you if you feel like you can, and everyone else says you can, sometimes you just need one person to say you can, and if you latch on to that person and listen and and um, you mind them and you let them fuel you, you just need one good person that has your back. And if that one good person probably has enough love to keep you going, that it doesn't matter who says you can't, um, you just have to recognize that and then be okay with that a lot of a lot of it had to do and also like my name my name's pretty weird so like growing up as a kid you have to own it or it's you know what I mean it's not gonna work I have an odd name so I'm already different so I have to be okay with that and move forward or like drown in it and listen to emo music <laughs> um, but um, but a lot of it has to do was with um, you just need three three people who who say yeah I'm with you and let go of pride and say, I, I'm gonna lean on them. And that's something very, very difficult for children and adults to do, to say like, I do need one person to love on me. And um, I feel pretty crappy. And I came to a point where I was like, that's all right. Because in the end, it just it's love and it serves you. Um, and it's okay to, to need it, want it, and rely on it. So I think that's, yeah. Wonderful words of wisdom, and I think that's a beautiful place to leave it. Oak, I'm so glad that you were here with us. Thanks Congratulations on Hamilton and everything else you've accomplished. I truly hope that it opens every door that Thank you're you. looking to walk through, and I know I, for one, am going to be your fan for life. Thank you. Thank I you for being here. It. Thank you, guys.